Hey, folks, it's Lindsey Huddleston back in the building, another SBS mental health moment. And I can't tell you how much fun I have doing this, especially when I get to connect with people who I love to be around, love to talk to, and I just get inspired. We're talking about Brandon Peoples, uh, head coach at Detroit Crystal Ray, also the athletic director, just an all-around good guy. B. Peoples in the building. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How you doing today? Good, good, good. I know you had to uh, get up because the kids was going to get it going. I know we only got a little bit of time before they take it over, huh? Oh, yeah, they downstairs right now asking me, calling me, Daddy, what are you doing? So I got <laughs> the okay. pants made up and everything. We're going to make sure we get to it. Well, first of all, man, I want to say I just appreciate all the hospitality you've shown me uh, at Detroit Crystal Ray. Uh, shout out to Jimmy Sanders, who's been the plug to kind of keep us connected. But uh, always a great mm -hmm. time. And I got to see you guys for the SPS Game of the Week when you were hosting uh, St. Martin DeForest of Cleveland. Am I saying yes. that? Uh, for yeah. uh, annual uh, battle of the uh, Detroit versus Cleveland piece. But let's talk about uh, not only that, but let's talk about the season you had and definitely be sure to compare uh, this season uh, with the season you had prior to this one just to give the uh, viewers uh, some context too. Okay, so um, this season was pretty successful for us. Uh, big, we uh, ended the season 17-5 um, and five before the whole um, – coronavirus hit us, so we were in the district finals. Um, we won a division this year, uh, intersectional two of the Catholic League, so we was division champs this year. Um, best season we've had in the history at Crystal Ray. A lot of positive things happened for us. Um, I won Coach of the Year. Um, Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a good accomplishment. We also won uh, Catholic High School of the Year as well, Detroit Crystal Ray did. So we was moving in the right direction, you know, still still trying to build, you know, but it was a success this year, and we just looking forward to build on it. Um, compared to last year, it was a struggle, you know, but a lot of those kids from last year's team got a chance to see what it was like, and I think that helped us this year, and the off season really, really, really helped us. They really got committed, and, you know, they didn't want to lose, so we just ready to get back in the gym and get back to work. I get it. You know, uh, as a coach, you know, how uh... – how fulfilling is it to be able to try to create a culture with a team and you may not have the success like you all have wanted like last season, but then mm -hmm. to turn around and have the success with the potential to do great things. How fulfilling is that when uh, you can almost look at the kids and say, yeah, this is what I was telling you about. Right. Uh, it's great, you know, because they get a chance to see their, their hard work, you know what I'm saying, the results of their hard work. Um, you know, and you just keep telling them like, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that if you want to be successful, you know, and then for them to put all those tools that you've given them and just use it during the season and see where it took us is amazing. Even they felt accomplished, you know, like when we was in the, we in the district final, you know, and I felt like we were playing Depsa, you know, which was going to be a tall order, but our kids wasn't scared, you know, they was going to be ready to play, you know, because they felt like they had put the work in and they was going to seize the opportunity, you know. We play. That's great, man. That's great. You know, uh, talk about where you were, what was going on when you got the call. And in most cases, people got a call that the season wasn't over. It was just going to be changed dramatically mm -hmm. with probably no fans or anything like that. And then, of course, they got to follow up. Talk about where you were when you got the call and talk about the emotional impact that, that was. All right. So for us, it actually started um, Wednesday night in the semifinals. So prior to the game, um, the other school, AD, Came to me and was like, hey, after the game, we don't want to shake hands. Before the game, no shaking hands. You know, and then at the time, I was so focused on the game. Like, well, all right. You know, I didn't really think much of it, you know. So um, when we got the email the next day um, saying that it was going to be no fans, and then we, we sent that out. I'm in the office, you know, just conversating with, you know, coworkers. And then we get an email saying no fans. And next thing, we get an email that is postponed. It's like wow, this is really, you know, going pretty fast, you know. So we just had to get all our team together and, like, explain to them what was going on. And then the hardest part for me is getting questions that we don't really know the answers to. Mm -hmm. the, that's the toughest part for me, explaining to them, hey, the season postponed, you know, the adrenaline. Hey, we got this big game, you know. But for the safety of all of us, you know, it was good that they canceled, you know. Yeah, I get it. You know, you're in a unique position, unlike a lot of coaches, because not only are you coaching a team that has the ability to go very far, you're also the mm -hmm. athletic director, so you're taking on more of an administrative role for the entire athletic community. 
What was it right. like in those dual roles? Uh, it was is is very 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 different. I'll say that you know being in the administrative room, you know you planning, you trying to think of the next move. You know as a coach, I'm just trying to basically just plan for the game at the moment. You know, but um, the long term, you know, being in both of those, I like being in both both rooms. You know, but I think the administrative job is a little bit harder. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, uh, I want to talk about something more on a personal note, and you and I kind of uh, talked about this a little bit offline. You know, I was looking at one of your uh, Instagram posts, and you were referring to a time uh, almost 10 years ago that you were really in a, you know, depressed state. You, you were dealing with the loss of your father, and I can only imagine what that was like. But I want to bring it up because you, you wrote out some goals, and you had some affirmations, and you had some strong statements that you talked about. And then you right. kind of look at fast forward to where you are now. Probably a lot of that stuff was checked out. And I only bring that up, man, because mm -hmm. I know that during this time, uh, there are a lot of uh, triggers for a lot of people as it relates to right. the, the social, emotional impact, uh, the mental health things. So just talk about what it meant and why you even chose to post that uh, that, that that document from last night. Uh, I chose to post it because whenever I come across it, I just think where I was at at that moment and what I wanted. And I just really posted it to show other people like, hey, you know, even the state you're in right now, that's not your end result. If you got to get moving, you got to get active and, you know, set out some goals. Even if they small goals, you know, you working towards something, you know. If you just sit and just let everything just come down on you, you know, you never going to get out of that funk, you know. Um, I think for me, you know, it was a little bit of a push too, you know, from your mom living in her house, you're on the you got a master's degree, you go on the couch, she's like, what's wrong with you? You know, it's like, you don't really know how to explain it, but, you know, just prayer, you know, and just re-looking at myself in the mirror and saying, like, I'm better than this and I can overcome this. And unfortunately, you know, death is a part of life and you got to keep moving, you know, when somebody close to you pass away. So it, it, it was tough for me to understand that because me and my pops was getting, you know, kind of close you know, at the time of his passing, you know, that was my go-to guy, you know, work midnight shift, so I'm up at night, so hey, I just call my pops, kick with him for a couple hours, so not having that outlet, you know, was kind of rough for me at the time, you know, like I said in the post, man, I was broke, like, it was, uh, I was partying, probably doing some things I shouldn't be doing every day, you know, things like that, but, you know, when I set out them goals, and I wrote down all them goals, it kind of gave me a, um, a plan, and it gave me a route where, okay, now I got to look at what do I really want to do, you know. And like you said, most of those goals is on that sheet I did, I have accomplished. There's a few on there that I hope to accomplish in the next, you know, couple of years, you know, once I'm done working um, in youth sports and things like that. But it was just a, mo it's just a motivational piece, man. Like, I just, every time I find it, like, I just be like, man, like, I'm just blessed to be where I'm at now, consider where... I was back then. Wow, man, that's amazing. I appreciate the strength you have in sharing that. The last thing I'll ask about that, are you fearful at times or were you fearful writing some of those goals or were you at such a low place that the fear was gone and you just had to put something out there? Uh, I I didn't know where it was going to lead me, you know, so I, I wasn't really scared. It was like, hey, I'm going to write this down and I'm going to go for it, you know, and at the time, like, I applied for, like, jobs at different colleges, you know, because I wanted to work in college athletics um, and facilities management. And, you know, I applied to jobs all over the country, and I really wasn't getting no calls back. But then I just took a step back and said, okay, where can I start at the minimum level? And I, I took a security job at uh, Joe Louis Arena. So um, I, when I started working there, you know, it kind of got my foot in the door to see, like, okay, is this really what you want to do for the rest of your life? And then I was also working at Wayne State doing a coaching program with my mentor, Ron Simpkins, um, former U of M uh, linebacker and NFL player. So, you know, he was giving me a little bit of guidance as well, you know, working with youth sports. So uh, combine all that and then the AD job at Crystal Ray came open and that was just like a, a, just a blessing, you know, from God. You know, I went to Redeemer, so it was kind of like I was going back home, you know, and I was – introduced to the position by my former basketball coach, Mike Evoy. So it kind of like all fell into place once I started, once I put everything down on paper and I started working at it, it was like, okay, 
now nah, I got it. Just the battery, just the battery in my back that I needed. You know, I, I seen the light and I was like, okay, there's no need to be down. Like just, just start working, praying, and like everything was gonna work out. And, and you know, that's why I said I'm here today. Man, that's amazing. I hope that our viewers can uh, take heed to that and uh, be able to relate to that story. I can't say enough about that. Uh, yeah. Also, some other things. You know, when it talk, talks about accomplishing goals, the last dance that's been on your uh, that's been on your rotation. You got to check that out. You got that VIP sneak. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got to see. Tell me what you thought about watching that. For me, I just think, you know, when we live through that, so I think what's happening is the younger generation didn't live through it. Right. So, you know, they got their opinion on LeBron and things like that. And for me, I'm sitting there like, hey, this is when I really was really getting into basketball. So it's like, yo, like just seeing his um, Michael's intensity, his competitiveness, like that I'm not going to take no for an answer. Like, you know, I'm going to push my teammates. If you don't like it, hey, I got to go at mine, you know what I'm saying? And you have to be like that when you're building a program, when you're building a team, you know, you may have to leave some people behind or you may have to just explain it to them like, hey, yo, this is the goal. Either you getting on board or you're not, you know what I'm saying? But I'm loving it, man. I just – I hope the younger generation are, is seeing, like, was no friends on the court, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could love – you know, you could be cool after, you know, like you say, they play cards and all that. But when it's go time, it's like, hey, we got to put our friendship to the side, you know, and I think – Basketball today, you see a lot of that in the NBA, a lot of, oh, that's my bro, you know, AAU culture, we all team up, you know, and it was like, the Bulls built that, you know, like a lot of people say, oh, Mike wouldn't have won without Scotty, but it's like, hey, the Bulls drafted Scotty. Nobody came and joined Jordan. Jordan didn't go to nobody else. They built that from the inside, you know, from the inside out, and then, you know, later, you know, I um, Rodman came, but you know, but other than that, them was like home bread, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I like about my situation at Crystal Ray. Like, it's not big, you know, so I'm working with what I got in the building. You know, I don't really get like no big nickname, big name, you know, student athletes and things like that. So it's building in, in house with your own and coming up with common goals and being leaders. Like, like I said, though, the competitiveness is what drives me when I watch that, like, okay, like, he had a different type of mindset than I think a lot of people realize, you know. Right, no, very good. And I think you make an excellent point when you say that was our generation, what we came up on. And I think as a mm -hmm. former coach myself, our coaching style is reflected in that. You know, right. that, that was like our basketball, you know, basic, you know, blueprint. And as a coach, we kind of put that out there. So I think that's a lot of time we have a conflict with younger players who are, are, are not really ready to take that approach. And I think you make a good right. point. Wow, man, you're saying some great things, Brandon, as always. Uh, before I get out of here, and I definitely look forward to talking to some more of your players later, talk about what inspirational message you can share uh, to not only the Detroit Crystal Way community, uh, the, the, the Catholic League community, or just, you know, viewers in general about uh, how we can stay focused during this time of COVID-19 and be ready for that normalcy or something like right. that in the future. Um. The one thing I would say is what I've been doing is I'm, I'm writing more goals. You know, I'm, I'm praying. Um, I'm enjoying the time with my family. You know, and I think something that I'm using this time for is um, something that you touched on a couple weeks ago, maybe like a month ago, maybe a couple months ago, was um, being able to unplug from the world a little bit sometime and take a step back and, you know, recharge yourself. So, you know, at the time with all this starting, you know, I was kind of getting a little burned out, you know, with coaching and all that. So it was like, oh, I was going to take a break anyway, but, you know, not this long, but, you know, having time to just sit back, you know, reflect on life and just realize that at any second, some things may be taken away from you, you know, so just always being prepared, you know, for the next step in your life, you know, so. What I would say is use this time to like pray, um, get more in touch with yourself and figure out what your goals are. How are we going to bounce back when we come out of this? You know, we don't want to be doing the same thing we were doing prior, you know, but like I said, I would just say use it to your advantage to pray, set some goals. And once we get out of this, work as hard as you can to reach those goals. Oh man, outstanding. And just as soon as I get up from this interview, I'm going to go to my whiteboard and 
be a little bit more specific with some of the things I'm working on. So you're inspiring mm -hmm. me just as well, brother. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing. I uh, look forward to supporting the Wolves uh, going forward. And to uh, Brandon Peoples, Athletic Director and Coach of the Year, uh, yeah. thank you, Craig Christopher, I want to thank you for coming on and uh, look forward to seeing you on the other side of this. All right. Thank you. Okay. Take care.